Uh, my name is Matthew Bakulis. I'm the offensive line coach at Augustana University located in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, I've been coaching for 13 years. I played at the University of Buffalo, just like Coach Shields said. Uh, I got the awesome opportunity to play for Turner Gill. Um, uh, I had five offensive line coaches in four years at the University of Buffalo, so it was pretty crazy. I got to learn a lot of what I liked and a lot what I didn't. One thing that I was blessed as I walked away from the University of Buffalo was our pin-pull scheme. I love this play. This is our bread and butter. This is day one. You ask any offensive lineman at Augustana University when it matters, what are we going to call? Pin-pull. Uh, I've been running this since, like I said, college and then 13 years of coaching. Uh, I started out in 2010 at St. Olaf, which is Division III school, playing in the MIAC. Uh, did that for three years, and I worked for my current head coach, Jerry Oshesky, who was a Wisconsin guy, played at Point. Um, doing that now when he got the job from St. Olaf to Augustana. I was blessed enough for him to be able to take me along with him. So being with him for 13 years, I've only worked for one head coach. I know it's pretty rare and it's pretty interesting, but at the end of the day, when you find good people to work for, sometimes you, you choose to stay where you're at rather than going somewhere else. Um, at Augustana, you know, we're a small liberal arts institution. We probably about have 2,000 kids. Uh, we are not a full, uh, we are not at the full NCAA max in terms of scholarship allotment. So we, at Division II, we're allowed 36. We only have 32. Uh, and to be able to recruit kids, we need to recruit a high academic kid. Kids that are going to fit a certain profile for us, they're going to be able to handle their, the things that we need in terms of the academic rigors of Augustana University, as well as being able to grow in our weight room and grow in our system. Uh, I put a heavy premium on the center position. Uh, I played it. I do not look like it as 100 pounds ago. Um, but for me, the center position is pretty big. And to be able to run this play, I utilize this a lot. Right? Our center is going to pull. We've had two centers in the last 10 years, or three centers in the last 10 years. Two of them been All-American. One was a Remington Award winner. So for you to run this play, I highly suggest you have a very mobile center. We put a premium on it, and that's important to us. All right? So here's a little bit about that. Uh, these are the last five years of us playing. When, when we sit here and look at this play, I, we could talk about yards per attempt and, and all that good jazz, but efficiency. Is the job doing what we need it to do in order to do it when it's called to it? All right, so on first down, is it getting fourth and 10? Or is it getting four yards minimum? Second down, is it getting half? Third, is it converting? Right, that's how we measure efficiency, All right? And so for us, when we sit here and look at it, 4.8 yards of carry, 48% efficiency, I think it's pretty good for us. Is that where we're at? We need to strive to continue to move forward. But it's a good play for us and we, and we use it a lot. The base rules of this thing, we're gonna run it to a tight end surface, it's 11 man. Um, when you look at the drawing here, we're gonna get two out on the surface, right? So we're gonna be in our spread set, 11 hand. We're gonna tell this tight end, the first thing, first and foremost, I tell you guys, is the two most important blocks are the tight end and a backside tackle. I've literally watched this play get pulled, people out on the surface. If you can't set the edge and get a guy pinned in, it's, this play is useless, right? Because if the defense is allowed to wash itself over the top, make things happen, that's what makes it difficult for this play to work. But for us, we've put a lot of nuance and a lot of reads that put it in our players' minds, okay? So the first thing that we come up before we ID this play is the tight end's gonna come up whether or not he can block this guy. That's the first and foremost. As soon as we come up to this play, we come up, we come spread right turbo. Can the tight end block this guy? If the tight end cannot block this guy, we're getting out of this play. And we're not gonna do the whole Monday night football, quarterback comes off his pedestal, comes up telling change in place, because what's the defense gonna do, right? You check the check. So I'm gonna do it from a place of cover. I'm gonna keep you where you want, all right? So we're gonna communicate to the back that we're not pulling anymore, we're getting in a wide zone. If I can't get you, how we'd make that definition is we tell the tight end, especially our young cats, right? When they first come into the program, the definition is that elbow. If the defensive lineman is not inside your elbow to the inside gap, get out of the play, right? We won't run this play. It's stupid to try and get yourself. If he can't set the edge, why do it, right? And I'll tell you, we communicate it by tapping the back. We tap our ass. And you'll say, well, coach, won't your defense pick up on you tapping your ass? No, it's the same way we, we talk about protections. So that it has a meaning for the running backs in run, and it has a meaning for the running backs in pass pro. So you can't tell that we're checking this play. And I've done it under the, under the guise of we're OK, but I've put that kid in his chance to be successful. So once we've identified whether or not this cat can get this play started, we start looking at the front. We make a Dakota call. If there's a three technique to the front side, we make a Dakota. That means that the play side guard is our first puller. First puller has the fat, first alley threat. Then we have our second puller ID, which is our center. 
Now we've gotten to the next level of this play that we sit there and say between the center and the backside guard, they have a me, you call. Most teams, really good defensive line coach, you heard two great ones right before me, talk about when you get pistol back or whatnot, they're gonna start cheating fronts, right? So now you're gonna see that nose close that center. Why work hard? Tell that guard to come cut off on the backside on the nose, give up your center, switch the puller, pull the backside. So when we run a Dakota, they're gonna pull the guard, and then they're gonna reach between, or the two is gonna find the leverage off of him who's gonna pull out of there. Most of the times it's our center because most teams aren't gonna give it to us out of dot that we can run it back with inside zone weak, things of that nature. Yes, coach? We can, yeah, I teach it, but I can't do it in practice. So it's, that's why I said, like, just give it up. You know, if we can't cut at practice, just like I can't cover, I can't cut out on the, on the perimeter either. So my guys have to be able to block, engage, and be able to get guys in phone booths and then extend extend their point of contact two yards uh, when they make it. And then this backside tackle, this guy right here, I tell him he's going to run at the heels of the next down defender past his play side gap. That's the nose. So he has to put his angle of departure at the heels of that nose. So when this guard, right, they ran a Dakota, the center calls a me, me, center and guard are out. That guard is going to sit here and get wide reach footwork in order to get that nose cut across. But what that tackle needs to do is block and get himself at an angle of departure where right now that that nose's heels are covering up his angle. So as soon as that nose comes up field, right, he comes up field, now my angle gets in his vapor and now I'm gonna run to where this linebacker is going, not where he is, right? So using geometry to allow, these guys are much more athletic than some of my cats, to be able to put him on an angle departure to work himself up. On the edge out of this two by two set, we tell the single receiver here, you've got jack rules. Too high, crack the safety because I already know that this guy's accounted for because he's the first alley threat. But now what happens if you see two cut? Bring that shit. Corner's gonna come hot right now. We have him accounted for. You sit here and see one high, now he stays true. He stays on. And it's a simple read for the wide receivers. Two high, jack, one high, stay. All right? And that's just in with Dakota. Now I'll tell you this, further along with what we've done, we've actually gotten to the point where now we read the first linebacker in the box for leverage because most teams when they see us hop into this bad boy they know we're running so those linebackers are starting to stack tackles they're starting to trigger they're reading through the triangle well now we've we've been able to develop it where we have a secondary and third call where we're now we're still in dakota but now we can pull the tackle change the read of the defensive lineman right but that's just the the blocking scheme in a whole when we look at the tight end right so the play is can you get it started we talked about the elbows, the parameters, in man line of scrimmage, can you get it started? The pullers, first puller is always has the first eye threat, second puller is always reaching the first guy inside the box at the second level. So if my first puller's kicking, my second puller's usually wrapping, but he's gotta be able to find a level to step on the toes of the linebacker and explode up. The running back for us, we speak in far, footwork, angle, and read. The running back, whether he's in dot, we can do this in gun. He's gonna take a wide angle footwork, He's gonna aim uh, one and a half yards outside of our tight end, okay? And then his read is he's going to set up the first, uh, first puller's block. So he's gonna shoot this shit wide and he's gonna force that guy to continue to be a wall player. Then that guard is gonna come through, smoke him and with him under the standing that he's gotta read the second puller. He sets up one, he reads two. And when this play gets really juicy and slick, he goes out, up and it makes like a, like, bang, like a Z. It looks just like that wide up and back out to the sideline. Sideline is where this play goes. All right, and then I told you about the wide receivers. 